What is going on YouTube? John here with Nonstop Affiliate and in this video I'm going to show you the 10 steps to digital marketing or affiliate marketing, online marketing, whatever you call it. So I'm mainly making this short video for people that are struggling with affiliate marketing. You're creating ads to landing pages but you're not making any sales and you're not making any money. This video is for you right here. If you're struggling with affiliate marketing, it's likely that you are messing up in one of these 10 steps right here. So let me break it down for you. Make sure you pay very close attention and let's not waste no time and get right into it. So the first step to affiliate marketing is picking the right offer. So when it comes to picking an offer, obviously you have a ton to choose from. There's all types of affiliate networks. There's all types of offers you can start promoting. So many affiliate programs that you could sign up for. But are you picking the right offer? I don't know. Let's go over a few things to make sure you are. So the first thing of a good offer is make sure that it's already selling hot. If you're picking an offer, just picking it at random, you're not sure if it's doing good or not, you know, you just think it's going to do well, it's likely that it's probably not going to do well. What you want to do is research the market. Find out what's already selling hot in Max Bounty, what's already selling hot in ClickBank, and all other affiliate networks. There's several different ways you could find out what's selling hot right now. If you go back to one of my previous videos, I show you guys exactly how to pick a right offer. So that could be the first thing you're doing wrong is picking a random offer you think you know about, you think that it's gonna do well, and just putting money behind it. It really doesn't work guys. Unfortunately, I've done it myself plenty and plenty of times before I had to learn, go with what's hot right now. So if that's you, make sure you stop with your, all your campaigns right now, stop all your offers, go back, do some research on offers that are doing well right now, offers that are making other affiliates money right now, and start figuring out how they're promoting it, start looking into their ads using spy tools. If you need information on spy tools, just go ahead and message me using the link below, and start picking the right offer to promote. So that could be step number one that you are doing wrong, is picking the wrong offer. Alright, so step number two is choosing a traffic source. So after you got the right offer, you want to choose a traffic source that you are familiar with. So there's Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, Bing ads, and plenty, plenty more different traffic sources that you can start using to start sending traffic to your offer. My number one suggestion is to pick one of them. Pick only one and master it. So if you're going to do Facebook ads, only focus on Facebook ads. Don't put 50% of your effort on Facebook, 50% of your effort on Google. You're just really diluting your product, diluting your knowledge, and not really focusing on what's important. And that is to making at least one traffic source successful. You want to always, always focus on one at a time. And before you move on to another traffic source, you want to make sure you have mastered your first one. So honestly, if that's you, I'd say go ahead and stop all your campaigns, pick the traffic source that you're going to start using and focus on that one and make sure you master it. Because once you master one traffic source, you're going to be very valuable to a lot of people, very valuable to yourself and to the offers you are promoting. But you can't do that until you master that one traffic source. So make sure you choose one, master it, then start picking another one, master that one, and eventually you'll become the master of several different traffic sources. That is your goal right there. Now, step number three, creating an ad. So when it comes to creating an ad, there's a few different things we're doing here. We're creating an ad on Facebook, creating an ad on Google, whatever traffic source you are choosing, make sure you are going by their guidelines. You don't want to get your account suspended or be completely kicked out of a marketing network by accidentally breaking the rules. That happened to me in Google. I really sucked. You know, I had to go through a lot of different things to get back on Google. So make sure you read the guidelines, follow the policies. Now that's just when you're creating your ad. Make sure you follow the policies. When you're creating your landing page, there's a couple other policies you want to make sure you follow. So when you're creating your landing page, you obviously want to make sure you are leading people into the right direction. You know, you don't want to put up a survey ad and lead people to adult traffic. So this is also a very important thing to be doing right right here. The best way to do it is to create content for the offer you are promoting. 
So when you're creating your landing page and your ad, let's say you're in the basketball niche. What you could do is create an ad that will help people jump higher. Once they get into your landing page, they're going to see the three tips to help you jump higher. Once they go through your three tips to jump higher, then you can collect their email address if they want to learn more, if they want to learn how to shoot better. It's really using content marketing. That's a good way to stand out. It makes people think you're really trying to help them, give them some knowledge, give them something for free. So when you're creating your ad and your landing page, what I like to do is create content around it. So I always create content for any offer that I'm trying to promote. If it was a sleep product, I would do 10 songs that will help you sleep better or five remedies that will help you get a better night of sleep. After they go through those five remedies, I would present to them my offer. But if you really want help sleeping, if you really want to go to sleep right now, check out these supplements that I'm promoting. They will put you to sleep for at least eight to 10 hours straight. So that's the way I create my ads. It's just all around content that has to do with the niche or the product that I am promoting. So make sure you do a good job in creating a real good ad and a real good landing page that you don't confuse people. When they click on your ad, they know what to expect on the next page. And again, that could be somewhere where you're messing up with your marketing. Your ad might be telling people one thing, but your landing page is completely different. Make sure those align up together. Make sure it's clear to people what's going on, what they're going to be reading about, what they're going to be looking at. And just keep it simple, guys. Simple always works best. So the next step is getting a good click-through rate. So a click-through rate is obviously how many people see your ad versus how many people actually click on your ad. If 100 people see your ad and only one person clicks on it, you have a 1% click-through rate, which is pretty bad. You don't want to have a 1% click-through rate. You usually want to have anywhere between 5% and above. So what you really want to do is make sure you're looking at your numbers your analytics of whatever marketing platform you're using, Facebook ads, Google ads, and make sure your click-through rate is at least 4 or 5% and above. If it's not at least 4 or 5% and above, obviously your ad is not doing very well and people are not really interested in what you're saying. So you have to fix that right now. So that could be something that you're messing up in your marketing. You're putting up an ad and no one's really getting around to it. A couple people are, but not enough people are actually seeing it and not enough people are actually clicking on it. So a key thing to do, if you're somebody brand new to marketing, if you're somebody that's completely fresh on the market, you know, you're not really sure how to stand out, what I usually like to do is put out exaggerated claims. Now, I don't want to lie or, you know, put out fake news, but, you know, I really make it sound interesting to people. I make my ads sound interesting to people. Or for example, I'm sure you guys seen these crazy YouTube videos that have those crazy thumbnail pictures that just make you want to click on them. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You want to make sure that your ad looks crazy, it looks spicy, it looks um, it looks interesting for people to want to click on it. If your ad is not catching attention, no one's really paying attention to it, then obviously that's where you're messing up right there. You want to make sure you're putting up an ad that's convincing, that's interesting, it's getting people interested and curious to what you're trying to present to them and eventually getting them around to see your offer. That's the main point here. Collect that email address and having them see your offer. So to give you an example, like I was using the basketball offer earlier. If I was putting a basketball offer up, I would put up an ad that would say, follow these two steps and jump 10 inches higher in one week. So think about that guys, that could be very interesting to some people that like to play basketball. If I'm telling them they will be able to jump an extra 10 inches following two steps in under a week, I'm sure I could get a lot of people interested in that. Now I don't want to make it sound fake or completely exaggerated. So if I was to say jump an extra 100 inches in under a week, obviously people would know that I'm lying, people would know that it's just an ad, that it's fake. So you really want to make your ads sound convincing, make them sound interested so people click on them as soon as they see them, bringing up your click-through rate. So make sure you take time every single day to go into your back office of Google ads, Facebook ads, whatever you're using, and look at your click-through rate. Are people actually clicking on it versus the people that are actually viewing on it? Now, the next step is email opt-in. So once people actually make it to your landing page, you want to make sure they're convinced to opt in. 
So if somebody makes it to the landing page, you know, they think it's cool, whatever, but they're not opting in. Uh, somebody else comes in, same thing. They think it's cool, you know, whatever. They check your content out, but again, they didn't opt in. They just left the website. And again, somebody comes in, they check out your website, but don't opt in. Well, obviously, something's wrong on your landing page that's not convincing people to opt in. That is one of the key, key, key components that marketers mess up because they're so interested in just getting that sale. You want to get that sale. You want to make money right away. But you're forgetting a key component, guys, to collect the email address first. That way, they could become a customer for life, making you money for life. So another key component, guys, is making sure that people are opting into your landing page. If you're not getting people opting into your landing page, then obviously, you know, you got to switch something wrong on that landing page. You got to completely create new content, throw it away, start from scratch, do whatever it is you have to do. So people know that the main point of this is opt into your landing page. Now, an easy way to do it is if you're promoting an offer that has something free, or maybe you're giving away something free, like a free training guide, a free ebook, a free video. Use that for the email opt in. In exchange for this free product or this free guide, I will need your email address for you to gain instant access. That is a, one of the key, key components, guys, to getting people to opt in is giving them something of value in return. If they're just clicking on a page and getting asked for their email address, not really sure why or what for. Obviously that they're not going to opt in, you know, they have nothing to do with you. They really don't know who you are or your offer. So make sure you're presenting something to the customer of value that's going to convince them to opt into your landing page. And that's usually called a lead magnet. What is your lead magnet? So, so if you're struggling with collecting emails, you probably don't have a good lead magnet. Something that's going to magnet people to come in and become a lead to your offer. Now the next step after an email opt-in is obviously generating the sale. So once people opt into your landing page, they get redirected to the offer. Once they're on the offer, that's when they decide whether it's a good offer, whether they're interested, whether they want to buy or not. Now to be honest with you, like I always say guys, people don't always buy on the first try. I'm sure this, this has happened with you plenty of times where you've seen an offer, you somebody showed you something and you thought it was cool, you thought you know it could be useful sometime in another, but you weren't interested in buying at that time. That's cool, that happens to everybody guys. That's why we are collecting the email address. So then you can send in an email again and again and again, reminding them that you have this product that's the solution to the problem or the pleasure the person is seeking. So again, once they make it to your offer page after they've opted in, you want to have at least about a good 3 to 4% sales. If you're not getting a good at least 3 to 4% sales, then you might want to look at that offer, rethink it, reanalyze it, make your own landing page for it, make your own sales page for it, is what I'm trying to say, and give it, an, give it another try. Make sure you're doing a good job on your sales letter so people are actually convinced that you have the solution to their problem. And real quick guys, when it comes to marketing, people always buy off emotion. So if you can make somebody feel something, if you can make them feel that you have the solution to their pain, or if you can make someone feel that you, you're going to give them the maximum pleasure with the product or the offer you are promoting, you can honestly get them to buy. People buy based off emotion. Always remember that. So it's always either by pain or pleasure. The people are always looking for one of the two when they're spending money. Now, going on to the next step, email follow-up sequence. So once they've opted into your landing page, they've seen your sales letter, they know your offer, they know who you are now, now you could actually start sending them emails. You want to send them daily emails, and with your emails, what you really want to do is make sure they have valuable content in it. If you're just sending an email, again, reminding them of the offer, and again, just trying to sell the person, Obviously, they're going to know that all you want to do is take their money. All you want is the money. So what you really want to do is nourish your email list, make them trust you, give them value, let them know that you actually know where they're coming from, you know their problem. You're here to help them with what they need, and people will eventually start coming around and buying from you. So before you start sending out thousands of sale emails, make sure you're nourishing your list, you're getting a connection with your list, your list is trusting you, your list is opening up the emails, and they're getting value from being part of your list. 
if they're just getting sales every single day trying to get them to buy buy and buy obviously they're gonna stop opening up your emails and eventually opt out of your list so again guys when it comes to sending up the follow-up sequence you want at least 7 or 14 days of an everyday follow-up sequence where the first couple of days you provide nothing but value and also let them know who you are in those first couple of emails you know let them know that they've opted into your list that you're going to be sending them information and great deals on these type of offers that you are promoting before you start trying to sell them all the time now on the next step getting actual sales in your emails you want to make sure you're using the right type of emails the right email templates there's dozens and dozens of different email templates you could be using if you're not sure of some just send me a message guys with the, on my facebook page down below and i'll be happy to show you guys some real good email templates that will generate you sales so let's say you sent out these emails to the past 100 150 people nobody has brought well obviously you want to start working on your email sequence to make sure people are starting to buy make sure people are familiar with who you are they trust you they know you give them value and they're willing to buy off of you so after maybe i'd honestly say give it about 100 150 people if no one has brought through your email no one on your email list is buying there's something wrong with your email sequence make sure you look into it make sure you're providing value and making people's lives easier that way at the end they could trust you and buy off you now going to the next step is cleaning up your email list so once you have an email list of uh, people you know you have a thousand emails you're sending out emails every single day but you're starting to realize about 50 percent of the people are not actually opening up the emails they get an email every day they will maybe open one once a week maybe once a month but they're not really staying active inside their email that's when you want to start getting rid of these people in your email list because at the, in the long run it's going to be hurting you and your conversion rate so i'd honestly say wait about a month with anybody with any lead that you collect send them an email every day for a month and if at the end of a month they haven't opened up an email they're really not checking your emails out while well, a lot of other people are and a lot of other people are clicking on your emails start getting rid of them from your list guys start deleting them from your list start crossing them off your list because in the long run they're actually hurting your conversion rate and you really don't want that you want to make sure you have an email list of a thousand people that are actually willing to engage with your emails and actually willing to buy from you so to give you a quick example they always say at least five percent of your email list buys from you so if you have an email list of a thousand people and only five percent are buying you could start weeding out all the rest that are not even opening up your emails you can honestly be making some good money with an email list of only 300 people if it's 300 of the right people so some people have a big old email list of a thousand two to five thousand people but they're not really making actual sales off of, off of it versus somebody that could have 300 emails and have all the right people on their list and making some real good money with that list so as you start collecting emails you want to start weeding out the people that are not actually helping your email list out and at the end guys it's just repeat the process all over again so let's go back through it again guys you just want to pick the right offer choose the traffic source create a good ad make sure people are actually clicking on your ad after that you want to make sure people are opting in after they've opt in you want to make sure they're buying from your offer after that they're on your email list you want to make sure you're sending them emails every single day and making sure the people are actually opening up your emails you're building a good relationship with these people you're getting people to trust you and which eventually will generate you sales and lastly making sure you're cleaning up your email list you don't want to have an email list full of junk so real quick guys like I said the reason I made this video is for people that are struggling with digital marketing so if you're struggling with affiliate marketing right now go through these 10 steps and figure out what you're doing wrong so that's really it for this video guys take it one step at a time for, with your affiliate marketing figure out what you're doing wrong and fix it right now like I always mention guys if you want to learn how to start making between three to five thousand dollars a month check out my number one recommended online business system guys it's what really helped me out understand all of this right here guys so you guys are going to get a lot of lot of value out of it and it's really for anybody guys you don't need no risk you don't need a high budget 
And you don't need any experience to start guys. So if you want to start making some real online money, instead of just trying to see what works guys, follow my number one online business system guys. Check out the link below and you could get started with your free training right away. And so that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, if you feel like you got some good content out of it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you guys on the next video.